Thank you very much for joining us today, Magda. And we are absolutely humbled to have you at our Sizo Connections event in March. I want to I want to briefly start by giving a very short summary of some of your achievements. And I, and I say ever so short, not because I don't want to do it justice, but just because I think you are clearly in our theater, a tremendous voice and globally a tremendous voice for cybersecurity. And we are very humbled that you share your time with us today. Magna, Magda has in 2021, not only made the top 10 global influences within cybersecurity, she was one of the top women in cybersecurity for ASEAN, and she is a co. She's the co-founder of Responsible Cyber. One of the things that I find the most intriguing about you, Magda, and we'll have a sidebar conversation about that, is Magda is fluent in five languages. Not only is she an absolute superstar when it comes to cybersecurity and a champion for women in the industry. She absolutely um, is, you know, one of those nice nerds, if I can say that. Magda, very welcome. And thank you very much for joining us today. Um, Magda and I have worked together on previous publications and, and events. And um, I, I consider her not only a mentor, but a, but a good friend. Magda, our conversation today is something that's quite close to my heart, as you and I both know having a presence online and sharing what we know with the world could be considered critical, but we also as security professionals expose ourselves to so much and seemingly should be setting an example. Now, in, in your case, this, this is very unique. I think I stopped counting when you had over 40,000 followers on LinkedIn. Um, that's that's quite a quite a number to to attain. But I want you to share with us a little bit what is what is the important for cyber professionals, but more specifically for the CISO community to to share valuable topics um, in these kind of forums. Thank you very much, Corin, for the invitation and for the fabulous introduction. You certainly made it really resonate as an important one, so I really appreciate it. I think the topic today that we brought to the table or we're trying to discuss about is not only extremely valuable, but a topic that is original in itself. We don't have enough discussions about this particular area. And we don't have clear advice to the cybersecurity practitioners, professionals, and especially chief information security officers about what or not what to share online or what not to share online. And with the coverage of social media and communication challenges that we have in our industry, I do believe it is, it is an extremely, again, relevant topic. Now, if we look from the general concept of sharing online, I think we need to take a first step back. And the first step back, Corianne, is to understand that we as professionals have a brand by ourselves. We have a persona, an online persona that represents what we do, who we are, and we need to define that first by ourselves before even we talk about what we are sharing and how we are sharing it. Now, when we have that understanding and we dissociate our own brand from our professional brand linked to the a company, no matter what it is, we can as well define our values as that particular persona online and start to think, who are we online and what do we want to achieve by sharing or even taking the decision to share some of the knowledge that we know and have. I think that is that is absolutely tremendous advice. When when we look at the presence, we are so heavily linked to our organization. And Magda, out of out of your experience, you've been the CISO, not only the CISO, but the virtual CISO of Fortune 500 companies across the globe. I think there's no better person to really give us some advice. How do we how do we draw that distinction and how are we active speakers and participants in our community? 
but also still value the still value the organization that we represent if i could ask that as the next question thank you Corianne. again a fantastic topic um whenever we are working with a big organization especially enterprise-wide international firm we certainly have to comply as an employee in particular with their communication policies and social media policies and the bigger the organization is the more stringent those policies might be and therefore we need to very clearly understand them understand what are the values of the companies uh, that we are working for and how we can manage whatever message we are sharing online in alignment with the compliance requirement and as well as the values of the company to achieve that first of all it's not that straightforward it's not easy and that's where i see a lot of uh, practitioners again or professionals in our industry deciding that they don't want to have a voice online because it is really strict and requiring them a lot of approvals to get some messages out there however there is always a way actually to achieve a balance now again a certain organization that is harder than in others but at the end compliance with the communication internal policies social media policies plus compliance with the values of the companies that you're working for as an employee are two key fundamentals to look at now when you have done that and you understand very well how the organization you're working for is driving their own presence online what are their concerns what are the key messages that they are happy to share forward you can decide on your own strategy and your own strategy as an employee of a company should be certainly to support the organization that you're working for. So supporting by resharing and sharing even further messages that your company has been there mentioning. And of course you should as well be a believer. So if you're a believer in the company's message and vision and mission, you should actually as well share it as much as possible that's your strategy to support your organization on the other side you need to have a strategy for your own sharing now that is where it gets even trickier with this alignment with compliance and social media policies internal communication policies external communication policies etc so depending on the role that you have in an organization those restrictions might be higher and you might actually want or need the support of a professional training around how to communicate publicly, how to ensure that whatever social media you share or post is aligned with the organization, is aligned with your own personal values, and there's no conflict of interest. Now, the conflict of interest or challenges when you're sharing in your personal name is that you still will be linked with the organization that you're working for. And therefore, Sometimes, even unconsciously, you might share something that creates a debate or literally leads to some negative impact on that particular company or firm. So what do you need to do with that professional training that you undertake with the support of your organization? You might be able to understand more. What if I share just a word that actually I wasn't aware of might create a debate because my company was part of a certain news in the latest weeks and people might interpret that differently so again a very particular controversial topic that requires extreme cautiousness with the reach of social media today if you tweet something it might be retweeted millions of times by users so either you want it to be positive or either very quickly it might get into a complete nightmare for you as an individual and for the company that you're working for. So again, uh, understanding of the consequences of you as an individual and especially as someone who's bringing the message representing the company, but representing yourself, you need to understand how the world works online and how this brand building works. That requires one, again, aligning your own values with the companies of the values, because if you're working there, you're should be actually as well a believer as i mentioned second 
do understand from a professional perspective why there are some restrictions and how much that can impact on your personal brand and the company's brand. So whenever you share something and you start building your strategy online, you actually think about any message that you post many times before you post it. A simple word wrongly you know, posted on any of the social media, again, can impact not only your company, but you as an individual and your brand in priority as well. Magda, what I'm hearing you say is a age old principle that carpenters use saying measure twice, cut once. In some instances, we can't unshare what, what we've been shared. And I think what you've given us is very, very practical advice. I want to build on some of the things that you've said. It clearly is critical for security professionals to share some of their knowledges, to share some of their lessons learned, to be become part of a community and a brain trust around solving these issues that we fight on a daily basis. So if it's clear that we have to do this, what is, what is your take for a CISO to build a professional um, public profile what what would be some of your starting steps um, from an advice perspective to someone like that? Um, I think Korean, you know, uh, as I mentioned, the first step is understanding your strategy. As a CISO or a chief information security officer, you have a role model to play. You're representing that persona that will bring inspiration, will drive learning, sharing will drive as well awareness and credibility in the business community as well beyond the cybersecurity. That's why you're sharing online. In order to achieve that, beyond having the understanding of the values and mission of your own organization and aligning with your own, you need to have a plan. And to have a plan, it's basically a roadmap of activity. The roadmap of activities includes ensuring that you have not only frequent, but consistent regular posting on social media or relevant, for example, online uh, blogs, online websites, eventually research papers, which we don't talk about enough in my view, and that's another topic that is fascinating as well, help the community to share knowledge more, which is in itself a challenge today in cybersecurity. We don't share enough. Like there is a lot of sharing in the hacking community, but overall cybersecurity still remains quite of lim limited. So your strategy as a stakeholder and a role model in the industry should include those activities that are on regular basis, including writing blogs, including be part of some research, including eventually driving awareness with some key messages. Uh, eventually you might go into as well some media that's a little bit more problematic because you, you usually need the approval of your organization when it comes to press and media, but you are able actually to, to get there sometimes and, uh, and some say so too. Now, when you have that kind of strategy with those practical, key activities that you want to take, then the more you do them, the more you learn how to engage further with the community, what worked, what didn't, basically building KPIs. Now, very often I get this comment from especially business leaders, but I don't have the time to spend every day on social media. Well, there are tools that help automation so even in social media and in all those kind of things, you are able actually to automate the process. But the most important for you, if you're really serious about building that communication in your brand, you will have, for example, even one or two hours with them a week attributed and clearly identified as this hour, I'm going to build my profile and um, online presence. When I do that, I build on certain activities where I can achieve them. And then I schedule them across a certain period of time with those tools that allows automation. And I think that's 
really critical as well for our industry to understand. You don't need to be every day, all the time on social media. You can automate the process, but you need to be structured about it. You need to have lesson learns as well and corrective actions and KPIs to achieve the willing result, which is build your brand and build that role model presence online. Wow, Amanda, it truly, truly is eye opening to to understand because similar to you, people have asked me, but do you spend all your time on on LinkedIn and do you spend all your time on these social media platforms? Another thing that I want to call out that I heard you say, and I absolutely agree with that is building that credibility by really sharing academic knowledge, research papers, and, and these kind of artifacts that come out of the industry, that really does attribute towards your professional profile. Now, I wanna take this to a conversation that, that finds us a little bit more sticky, at least from my previous life in the legal world, We've had many, many a president in case law where people are able to be dismissed for things that were said on private social media platforms. And I think we've addressed some of that in what you've said with understand what you are allowed and aren't allowed to do. But now my question being, as a security professional and as a CISO, what are the things that I need to consider between my professional profiles and my public or private profiles that is not relating to my occupation? Absolutely. So when it comes to the challenge of, you know, understanding whatever we post online is there forever and it represents us with the convergence between our professional and personal life, there is no line that clearly defines the difference between both. So if someone Googles you and finds some posts that they might actually not like, they might consider that as a specific reason or a good reason to, for example, dismiss someone. So it's a question that you need to ask yourself. What do you want people out there to read about you or see about you? If you are posting things that are maybe, you know, debatable or maybe might compromise you in the future, again, think twice. Maybe that is your opinion today. But what if you change in one year or two years? Maybe you might completely change opinion or just mature as a professional. And you consider that unprofessional from your side to post, even if it's on your personal profiles. So again, as a security person or as a professional who's evolving in their careers, you need to remember that particular word that I keep on repeating. You are a role model. So try to, whatever you're posting there, to encourage that positive attitude, attitude learning, and really, again, values that are aligned with who you are and who you're working with and working for. So if you achieve that, then whenever you're posting on your private social media, you understand that, hey, what happens if, you know, that particular message is something that I believe in today, but maybe I change my opinion, as I mentioned, what happens if that's not aligned with the company's value? And lastly, which I'm going to touch as well as a, actually a topic, a little bit controversial, what if my account is hacked? We are security professionals. It doesn't mean that we are actually not, you know, completely um, vulnerable to any compromise. We might be compromised by our friends, family, or any other means or even just by a human error or a mistake that we forgot. We are only humans. And this is also, I think, a very big taboo in the security um, you know, community. Or oh, if we are in cybersecurity, we are not allowed to have uh, such incident. Well, it can happen directly from someone else. So we need to consider as well the consequences of our accounts being accessed, accessed or even compromised and then that information that we have been sharing, even with a very private, for example, settings, being actually shared publicly. And I always think about that as well. So very practical example, what happens if I tell you tomorrow, all your messages on Facebook are gonna be published online? 
what will be your reaction. So again, thinking about those three points allow you to actually take a very different approach to whatever you post on social media and consider that there's no anymore a very strict line between personal and professional presence online, but also that you represent that role model in the community. So you should focus on the positive sharing rather than just, you know, too much of sharing online because we never know at the end. Magda, I think it's invaluable what you what you are saying, and 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 my takeaway really is to to think before you post in any event, as as we should lead by example in this industry. Something that's also really close to my heart in this specific topic is to also just be very authentic, and ensure that what you do in your personal capacity, um, whether that is Facebook or Instagram, you really have a close view on who follows you, who befriends you. I have seen it many a times where we become vulnerable through an extended network. Um, and by virtue of being in cybersecurity doesn't make us unvulnerable, as you called out so very eloquently. I want to I wanna close close this session, the session out and say to you or ask you, Magda, what would be your top priority for a CISO to share and engage in communities in and around him or her with, with regards to knowledge sharing? What should we be considering? How can we add value to the communities around us? Possibly lived experiences, lessons learned, architecture reviews, whatever we need assistance with. But how do we how do we bring value to our community, you know, to to better this fight that that we have against the cyber, the cyber criminals? Fantastic, you know, takeaways, I think, for our audience as well uh, to address. Uh, if we look at the first point, and I will address three points as a takeaway as takeaways. The first point is very clearly to identify your audience. Who do you want to share or interact with the most? Are you talking about general public or basically sharing knowledge about cyber awareness? Or are you aiming to raise knowledge and sharing all the, that particular um, resources that you have or you have seen with security professionals? Both approach are different and it's critical for you to understand who do you want to address first. Now, this is the first point. The second point, when you have identified who do you want to engage with, which, with, sorry, it is actually to very clearly as well understand how to share your message. If you are talking about cyber awareness, you can bring a lot of value sharing just good tips with the community and Good tips do not mean just listing best practices. There was a very interesting study showing that 50% of communities and random people of a survey in the UK and in the US did not know what MFA meant. 50% did not know what MFA stands for. So if we are looking at raising awareness within our community, we need really to understand that audience and try to bring that value to them by raising that awareness in their own language and words. The second, of course, audience where, and how to bring value to them, because the second takeaway is bring value to your audience, is to ensure that you share actually really resources that help professionals in our industry evolve maybe improving their knowledge and their skills, capabilities, encourage them to check certain things that you have discovered were very valuable for you, that you search for many weeks and months and actually you found a resource, a resource that was very good, share it. That will be very, very valuable for the community. Make sure that you actually very clearly help other people improve because at the end, that's how we lead by example. And then the third point is, Take the feedback from your audience. If people are following you for whatever you're sharing, they certainly follow you for a reason. So listen, try to understand what works, what doesn't engage whenever it's possible. 
and do not actually fear as well critics. So the third point, engagement and conversation, even if they are online. So if I like, close this conversation, Korean today is first, understand your audience. Who do you want to share with? Second, make sure that you align your message with how the audience can perceive it and read it and understand it and third engage with your audience to improve the messaging and as well to reach more people Magda, i think again what what tremendous advice you've given us i i really thank you for your time and and your authentic approach to helping us as a community problem solve I think our sizers will get great value out of this conversation. I certainly got great value out of this. And I think it is very critical that, that we listen to somebody that has obviously practiced what they preach and has been able to build a, a very large social presence from a professional perspective, but, you know, um, uses that to the, to the interest of the community for knowledge sharing. Magda, thank you very much. I'm going to ask Riley to share with us what he captured today out of our conversation, because that will become part of the artifact and how we um, transcribe today's session. And we hope that everybody that joined us for today got great value. I certainly did. And thank you very much for joining us, Magda. Thank you very much, Korean, for the invitation. <laughs>